Hello everyone. In this video we're going to find out who the strongest carry is while also finishing the game with every character at level 1. At the end of the last video, GA started coming up with a way to win the game at level 1, and the more he talked, the more convinced I became, for one simple reason. Nivalia. Nivalia has a starting passive capable of giving her 226% extra damage that can stack with all other damage buffs in the game. The plan is to OTK the enemies with Nivalia's excellent damage utilizing Icebreaker and High Cold Damage. So let's go over what characters and perks we decided on for the challenge. First up in our lineup, we have Andrin. Andrin is our speed carry. He's also going to help fix our decks for the rest of the characters. So the perks we gave him are a lot of money and shards. Not full money though, because we actually needed a few more perks. Um, full speed on <laughs> his uh, normal passive, full fast charges, full slow. Uh, not full energy. I think the only one who has full energy is Laia, and I don't even think that was necessary, but we thought we might as well have it because we had extra perks there. Uh, we got evasion, just in case we need Ballad of Evasion, and then we have Stealth on Heroes increases damage and healing done by 25%, mainly so that we could power up one of Nivalia's hits later on. We also took more uh, vulnerable charges. I'm remembering <laughs> everything in this game. Uh, we have Slashing Damage, just because, no real reason. And then we went all in on Chill on Enemies also reduces Blunt Resistances by 0.3% because we figured that would help him deal more damage or help let Nivalia deal more damage than anything else he could take. No need for the Inspire perk because he's going first. And With Cornelius, we decided to take full money, full shards, also full fast so that he can keep up in speed uh, with the most enemies in the game because I believe 14 speed goes up to 22 speed which is faster than most enemies and then he can also speed up the rest of the party with his own fast charges and scrolls of speed. Again, we don't need more energy because we're not going past for round one. We did increase vulnerable charges up to seven rather than six because we had the opportunity to. He's also going to be applying a lot of chill and doing some cold damage of his own as well as applying a lot of wet so that Navalia can do as much damage as possible. We took the Inspire maximum charges on this hero are uh, limited to one, but Inspire draws two cards that we only have to put a Wild Hunt from Andrin on him, and he will draw seven cards at the beginning of the turn. Next up, we've got Laia. Laia has also full money perks. Gonna have increased slow because we plan on slowing with Piercing Hal uh, for the entire enemy team. Then we have uh, increased HP because, you know, we didn't have anything better to do. <laughs> Charges we apply for evasion are increased by one. It might come up. Then we also have buffer increases one. Um, increased vulnerable charges because Piercing Hallow applies vulnerable, so we want to apply vulnerable to all the enemies, helping increase the amount of damage potential we have. The powerful charges here are important so that Divine Power can increase uh, the powerful on Nivalia up to seven, which is the max amount of powerful she's going to have. We also took the Inspire maximum charges on this hero are only one, but it draws two cards because we're planning to put one draw onto Laia. After that, we've got Nivalia. Nivalia, we don't have any speed perks on because we actually want her to be slower than Cornelius at times. And then we have full money perks that we could afford while also going into a little bit of extra stealth charges. That way we can increase her damage as much as possible whenever we do get stealth on her. We then went for full uh, Fury uh, charges and perks because Fury on this hero increases his damage by 5% instead of 3%. That uh, means she can do a lot more damage with 100 Fury. It goes from 300 to 500%. And we do hope to get her there if we can since she's a warrior and she can get the double and triple Fury. Next, we took on some Blunt and Crack charges as well as went into the cold perk tree went for the full powerful so powerful increases uh, her damage by 10% rather than 5 but only has a maximum of 7 charges increases chill applied as much as possible does as much cold damage as possible and also applies a little bit of wet because we probably will be applying wet with Navalia as well and then we went for the full blessed damage rather than de bless increasing damage and healing it only increases damage but by 1.5 instead of 1 so this should give her her maximum damage potential overall, uh, outside of having as much crack as possible, but we're applying crack mostly through shatters anyways, so it's not a huge deal. And yeah, that's going to do it for the perks explanation. Let's get into the run. Alright, getting into the run here, we are... <laughs> 
starting out with a uh, good seed for what we want to get here. Um, we got Magic Tome, we got uh, Emerald Necklace, we get a little bit more speed early on. We got really lucky in our first divination. We have purple setup, which makes it cost zero and does the same thing as the draw three, we put one back. We got Divine Guidance on Laia. That's the two most important cards here. Headbutt and Bookworm are nice because we're getting those anyways. But yeah, after that divination, we were pretty confident in this run. This is Andrin's deck. I'm going to pause for you. We have Chant of Initiatives so that we can speed up Cornelius and Laia. Uh, whatever we need to. Actually, usually we'll be speeding up, if we play both, a Cornelius and a Navalia, and then Cornelius will speed up Laia to be faster than Navalia. Uh, if we only want to do one scroll of speed, we have Deflex for extra draw, because we didn't need to get rid of them. We got another setup, which was very nice for us, uh, just so we could draw even further into our deck. We got a purple Sprint, which is one of the few zero-cost uh, draw one cards that starts in your starting hand. Very nice. That's normally why we get a Vigilance in the deck. Uh, which we also purchased, but basically Andrin's going to be able to draw through his entire deck the entire time. Uproot is there so that he can apply Vulnerable to all the enemies, and then Hunter's Mark is there just in case we want Mark later down the line for focusing some bosses. So, very good stuff. Of course, Expert Tracker is amazing as well. Cornelius, he's mainly going to be doing one thing in that he's playing Scrolls of Intellect that we have upgraded here. Uh, I think we managed to get this. No, we didn't manage to get another one, but we did buy a Transmission as well. And then we have his scrolls of speed so that he could speed up Laia and Navalia. The reason that we have one scroll of speed as yellow and one as blue is so that we can use the yellow one on Laia and the blue one on Navalia. This guarantees us always having our fast charges in case Andrin only needs to... <laughs> uh, it means that Andrin only needs to have one chance of initiative so that he can go faster. So yeah, I'll show you how it works once we get into the battles here. We have a flash on Laia that was kind of lucky to get. Expected Prophecy for drawing further into the deck. We have a delay response with Detoxify, so we give extra Inspire and Energize without having to slow anyone down. We have the Inner Fires for now to give extra powerful, but Divine Guidance is really what we're looking for, as well as a Piercing Howl, so that we can give full powerful to Navalia and a little bit of Bless, as well as Lay on Pause for Bless. Then for Navalia, we got a Shatter. Shatter is very strong early game because it just does two sources of damage. Those both get increased by passives and including her damage passive and then uh frost nova here is for extra aoe in case we need that ice lances for applying chill and zero cost punches so that we can do as much damage as possible for as little energy as possible as we won't have a ton in the starting game um primarily just because we don't have a lot to spread around but we'll get more and more as we go through so that's going to do it for the decks uh i'll show you how it works in the first battle coming up here uh, very fun run overall. I, GA actually ended up coming over to our house, <laughs> or my house I guess, and uh, we, we hung out and he was just like, hey, you want to get it started, see where, see what it looks like, see how hard it is, and we were just like, yeah, let's do it, let's, let's have a good time, and uh, <laughs> we ended up completing the entire run. So, although GA isn't in the, the game as a co-op partner, we were just playing this game together, so that, that was a good time. Uh, again, shout out to GA because he's just a fantastic person to play with and be around. Uh, starting out here, all these fights are going to look relatively similar, but we'll go over the nuances as I do plan on showing a lot more of the fights. Uh, this run ended up being a little bit faster to show in most of the battles because we are going for that uh, just level one like <laughs> um, uh, OTK, like round one. Easy, easy stuff. Also, early game, level 1 isn't going to be affecting too much, obviously, because you would be level 1 normally. As we go throughout the game, our primary concern really is the final bosses, as those just have a ton of HP to get through, and I I wasn't sure that anyone could do it, but Navalia, her passive is just so good, as I mentioned earlier. So I was convinced that with her, it, it was definitely possible. Otherwise, it'd be very, very difficult, and we'd probably have to come up with a different strategy other than um, purely relying on OTK, maybe having a little bit of more defensive stuff in mind while a carry takes like a few turns to kill the final boss. Even then, it'd be relatively difficult. But you can see already, Navale is doing a good chunk of damage thanks to the powerful and the bless. Um, the wet charges on the enemies also help the cold deal even more. And then once we get her down below half health, she'll start <laughs> really wreaking havoc. Um, if she's not already, because as you can see, first fight, easy, round one, no problems. 
Um, again, to be expected since the OTK is very uh, meta and possible for across the obelisk, <laughs> um, especially in the early game. Although the early game is one of the harder parts to make it work normally, although for it just changes for us since the early game is uh, is where we're going to be at our strongest in comparison to the enemies. Um, though the card quality, as GA puts it, does make up for our lack of passives in the late game. Again, strategy here. Put a Wild Hunt onto Cornelius, makes him draw more earlier on. We have a Scroll of Intellect that Cornelius is guaranteed to draw so that he can give Inspire to Laia. Uh, Laia will also get extra energy that way, which is even better for us because later on, once we have a yellow Divine Power, we can overcharge it to give even more Bless to Navalia increasing her damage even further. So, yeah, we trace on Navalia, again, mainly looking for Shatter. We're Divine Powering her, um, just to make sure that we get everything we need. We're getting up to max draw pretty often, so Navalia, as you can see, drew through her entire deck. Very solid stuff for us there. We get to remove a Fire Spell out of Cornelius' deck thanks to that challenge. We tie up a Pig here so that we can get a Dark Miasma later on. The... Deflex, uh, not super useful for us to draw. Andrin's turn's like the most complicated, as you can see. <laughs> I have to like figure out what stuff we need to get rid of. Um, I need to get rid of that setup so that I could uh, scavenge it back into my hand and then draw three more after that, uh, allowing us to draw the Wild Hunt. We just need Wild Hunt every single start of the fight, so that's why it's super important for Andrin to draw through his entire deck. If he doesn't, we're in trouble. Um, this run's kind of fun because we could always have Laia go before Cornelius if we absolutely need to. Uh, most of the time we're going to be having Cornelius uh, go before Laia since that he can give her extra energy and she does more work with the energy, but it is nice to have that flexibility. Um, it's one of the reasons that <laughs> Laia is very good as a support. Uh, not like the main reason, but you know, one of them. We took a challenge here because we felt very confident in our damage. It's also nice to take challenges early for these free card upgrades. Uh, it'll allow us to get a Divine Power that is overcharged, and we didn't think we'd have too much trouble in this fight. Uproot here is very nice. Uh, outspeeding all the enemies also. Uh, very nice. <laughs> um, we didn't have to worry about uh, pretty much any enemy in the early game because Andrin's just 22 speed to start out with, I think, right? So he's... He's stupidly good. I don't think we ended up buying that uh, fast ring either. We just didn't need it for our speed control. We already had the perfect speed numbers, so we could have made Andrin a little bit faster if we were worried about getting speed later on, but it wasn't something GA was concerned about. And when he was that concerned, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I'm not concerned either. As you see, we just finished everything off with a shatter there. Navale has tons of excess damage. We get unstable power at purple, which is great. It's just a free draw one card in Cornelius' deck. His powerful might matter as he does some damage. Here's our Divine Guidance upgrade, very strong for us. Uh, here we didn't really have a great upgrade for Navalia, but we do upgrade Frost Nova, because we might as well. Upgrade a Rain on Cornelius, just because we want to apply as much wet as possible. And then we get a Hunter's Mark upgraded, so we can apply more vulnerable with Andrin. There we get our Dark Miasma by throwing the Tied Up Pig into the pit. And we start the attack on the Cultists and Bellifor. Is it Bel Belfior? Belfior. Yeah, Belfior sounds right. That sounds like a, a name. <laughs> Anyways, Cultists, again, not going to be too much of an issue. As you've seen, these fights are pretty darn similar. Um, we do sometimes get to apply more Vulnerable, sometimes we get to apply more Mark, depending on what Andrin draws and when. Uh, he doesn't always get all the cards that... We could possibly want to play there are some turns on him better than others but we always can guarantee wild hunt and that's the main thing divine power here being overcharged now we can get in volley up to greater heights rather than what was it five bless we go up to 11 and yeah <laughs> straight away just like a frost over shatter will always finish everything off in the early game here especially if navali is at all hurt which she is below half right now so she gets that plus 30 percent and get used to seeing those uh, level up icons on the left there. They're going to be there the entire run as we <laughs> just <laughs> diminish our experience further and further. So fun fact, you actually lose experience if you don't level up um, after you go into the next act. Uh, you get diminished experience after you level up every act, but in... Uh, 
future acts, you continue getting diminished experience even if you don't level up, even though normally when you go into the next act, like you start getting regular experience again. So it's very possible to end up with a lot less experience than you otherwise would. I think I show it in the thumbnail on this video. I'm not sure which thumbnail I actually ended up deciding on, but <laughs> you can see it uh, later on in the run. We, I think you normally get to like a thousand or something experience and we got up to like 560. So very fun stuff. <laughs> Again, not much to say on the Belfiore fight. We've been having a lot of excess damage. Giving Vengeance early on is really a, just a huge powerful card for Nivalia. So if we get that one card, which we are, we're looking for, we're gonna be in really good shape. It gets her even lower health, so she can have even more damage per card. And her damage passive actually starts showing up on all the cards that she selects too. She's only, she's the only hero who has that, so it's very funny to like look at and be like, oh yeah, look at all these cards, they do so much damage, only to realize that it's her passive making them super strong. Anyways, we didn't get much from Belfiore there. We're mainly doing a lot of these fights so that we can have extra card rewards. The path here is also uh, a necessity because we wanted to take the Dryad path. This is the standard high score runner thing, except we're not doing Betty. We tied up the pig for Dark Miasma instead. Um, the Betty path gets you more score for the nodes, but I'm not worried about score primarily. I just was worried about doing this challenge at level one with all our heroes. And wow, that music got a little bit louder, like very quickly. I'm gonna see if I can like tone that down slightly. <laughs> I think that's toned down, I don't know. Uh, hopefully it's toned down for you. It should be a lower decibel for you than it is for me. This Rift fight is a little bit hard because they all have uh, decent frost resist and frost is the main damage we're doing. However, Navale just packs such a punch. <laughs> we're gonna be just fine. Our, here, our, uh, our heal after Belfiore, because he just gives you a standard heal after the fight, was a little bit concerning, but we have plenty of ways to lower her health, including her starting base card. Um, as you can see, we couldn't just immediately shatter right away, so that was the challenge of the fight. We <laughs> we weren't able to finish off in two cards. We had to use like four cards there with Nivalia. Very tough. <laughs> Anyways, not much for us to get there. Um, for card rewards, I think we took nothing. Eldritch Wand is a little nice to have. We get extra frost charges with Rift Shards on Nivalia. So. We took a few things there, but nothing too major. The extra frost charges from Cornelius playing spells is nice whenever he does play a spell. We go ahead and take the extra fight here, just because we want more of those card rewards. Not really for experience, since experience doesn't matter, um, but that normally would be why you take extra fights as well, uh, so that you could level up as fast as possible before the challenge points uh, at certain parts of the run. As like midway through every act, all enemies scale up, and you may or may not be leveling up depending on how well you've done previously. I think if you do super well and get like excellence every single fight, you will level up to the next level before the challenge fight um, where enemies have scaled. But if you don't, you will have to do like one or two fights with the enemy scaled essentially above your character's levels. So you better hope that you have good cards and a good strategy at that point, at least when you're playing on the highest difficulty. Although, I guess I, I should be fair and say that Cross the Albos can be difficult at any difficulty, depending on like your familiarity with the game. Um, Leon Paws there gives exactly as much Bless as uh, Divine Power, and we don't want the healing from Leon Paws on Nivalia necessarily, though there are times that the Leon Paws healing will be very nice for us to have. And here we have just enough damage. We actually had a little bit of excess with the one punch there to... Uh, get over these enemies. As you can see, they have scaled up and started getting more powerful. That's why our damage scaling was a little bit worse. Uh, we decided that we could take the remove card here, so we might as well. Uh, we weren't really too worried about our damage dealing. It sucked that the mushroom hit Andrin, because that's the worst one it could have hit straight away, since we're filtering out the other players, uh, or the other characters' decks with scavenges and traces and all that sort of good stuff, or scavenging traces. Scavenge doesn't filter other characters' decks, just trace does, but we're gonna be using trace multiple times with those scavenges, and wild hunt, of course. So yeah, Cornelius, what are we looking for? It's primarily just a uh, frost application. So we're looking for like a frost nova. Uh, that's what I try to find, and rain. Uh, so wet application as well, so Nivale can do as much damage as possible. Um, since getting up to like, 12 rain could or 12 wet could do a lot of work for us especially later on also sorry if the quality looks a little bit low i was noticing on my rewatch of the video that the quality just seemed a little bit off and i'm not sure if that was due to compression from having the sped up footage or 
or whatever it was, but uh, didn't didn't know how to fix it straight away. So <laughs> sorry, but uh, hopefully this is fine enough of a watch anyway. Got another uproot on Andrin. Andrin having extra vulnerability is always nice for us. We get rid of a deflect as we don't need it in his deck anymore. We got rid of inner fire as we're just consistently getting divine guidance on Laya. Um, so inner fire extra powerful is not necessary. We're going to be getting rid of uh, both of those as we can. And then the dryad fight here shouldn't prove too much of a difficult uh, fight. Is that, is that proper grammar? <laughs> Anyways, it shouldn't prove too challenging. Uh, she isn't super resistant to cold, if I remember correctly. She's weaker to fire, of course, but not having super resistance to cold makes it relatively easy. I think, what is she resistant to? She's resistant to, like, holy or dark? One of those two. Uh, one of those two is not good against her, but I forget which. She also summons, like, dryads later on and has this whole, like, gimmick where she could potentially outheal you if you're doing very low amounts of damage, which I've had to deal with on, like, Thorns runs and stuff like that. Man. <laughs> Talk about a fight that's just so nice to be able to, like, yeah, we're going to one-shot this with our most damaging hero and, like, super powerful cards. So, fantastic. Anyways, um, one of the things we're missing out here, of course, is uh, Navalia's level 2 card is very nice. It does extra, extra crack and frost charges on enemies whenever she hits them, um, which scales very nicely with Icebreaker as well but wasn't something we super needed. Here, <laughs> here we have a purple benediction, which like I just really wanted to take. It's not technically energy efficient because when we overcharge our divine power, we are getting two bless per energy, which is the same as that purple benediction there. But I wanted to take it just in case we got a doubling spell card on Laia and that ended up being good. Uh, we got forest crown here on Andrin. The Dryad Mask on Navalia because she's going to be doing extra damage every turn with it. It helps a little bit. We got the Speed Boots on Cornelius because it doesn't hurt to have the Speed Boots. He'll get up to 23 speed that way. So we don't have to worry about a uh, Fiend or a Colin uh, when we're speeding up Cornelius. And then we can make sure that Laia is sped up to 24 as well. So Laia doesn't have to worry about the Colins either. And then Laia can slow them down for Navalia who will be at 22 speed. So anyways. Just some speed stuff there. <laughs> this fight here is, again, not going to be too much of an issue. There's nothing here that really resists cold uh, super strongly, at least nothing that has a ton of health. The 148 health uh, Rifty, I think is like a Rifty, I actually don't know what he's called, that's the like pet name for them. But um, yeah, <laughs> the 148 health Rifty there isn't uh, meaty enough to survive our damage, even with its resistances. The Divine Guidance is also just in full full effect here. We couldn't do Delay Response because I didn't have a uh, Detox there, so we weren't able to give ourselves some extra energy with that. Uh, we didn't really need it, unless like I didn't draw the uh, Frost of a Shatter, but we were going to get it. So Picked up another upgraded setup on Andrin, saves up some uh, stuff down the line. Asked if we needed Innervate because energy seemed to be a little bit of an issue with Navalia, like we weren't getting up to full energy. Uh, we get a life tap on Navalia though, so that's going to help some of our energy issues, and we can upgrade life tap later to give us two energy, even though it gives us the decay. The decay doesn't really matter since we're always finishing stuff round one anyways, and the amount of life it takes away is about the same. So we don't take the extra energy because we just don't think we need it. Slippers here is a very interesting get. Uh, it means that we could potentially well, it doesn't actually change anything is, is part of our problem. <laughs> um, Speed-wise, it doesn't change a thing. I had to talk about it a little bit with GA as we were like, discussing it. I was like, does it make any sense? And he's just like, no, nah, I don't think it does. And it made me sad because I'm like, Slippers is normally so good. But Forest Crown, I talked about getting that on Andrin instead of Forest Crown so we could take a better ring later on because sometimes I, I value rings over armors. Um, but it would mean that we don't get a good armor. So... There's, there's the reason. Uh, <laughs> our speed control is fine as is, and getting slippers wouldn't change anything, since we need four fast on most of our heroes. Four or three fast, which slippers only provides two at max. So expert tracking on Cornelius here. We do ha find a rain early on. We aren't going to need the speed, so we get rid of the bookworm and the fast scroll, so we can draw as many useful spells as possible. And then we scavenge back up a trace so we can look at Navale's deck. We see we're getting Vengeance. We're very happy about that. We get rid of the rain. And we get a ton of rain in Cornelius' deck. So 
Uh, the tree, big old tree, is up to 11 wet. The dryad is, of course, taken out immediately because we have the moonstone from fighting the uh, super dryad. We get a huge divine power there, going up to 11 bless. And with vengeance, we're going to be doing almost all of Yelmer's health right away. <laughs> Finishing it off with one single ice lance afterwards. Navalia just does crazy damage with her passive. It's, it's a wonderful thing. A nightmare we don't take because we're not planning on transforming Navalia's damage. And we get rewarded for not taking the uh, slippers at all on anyone, especially on Cornelius, as we get a boots. We take a magic tome on Andrin rather than on Navalia because magic tome is going to be giving us... Um, or Magic Tome is going to be going away as soon as we Icebreaker for Navalia, so we figured we might as well have it on Andrin so that he could draw even further into his deck if we need to, since he does play Chant of Initiative, which is a spell. Uh, of course, we then find Archmage Book straight away. We don't know if we're going to need the two draw here, and we don't know who else it'd be super useful on, maybe on Cornelius. Um, but here I'll show you all the changes that we ended up making. Uh, of course, this is our deck at the end of... gosh, yeah, this is after we bought everything. So, didn't show our deck at the end of Act 1, but here's our deck at the beginning of Act 2, where we have three setups, a sprint, two traces, two uproots now, both of them upgraded. We upgraded our uproot that we picked up earlier that wasn't, so we can now apply four vulnerable to the entire team with Andrin if we get a nice turn. We also still have a bunch of reigns with Cornelius. We got another scroll of intellect because we could finally purchase one here, so now he could start with three. Um, and we can find that later on if we need to. I kept the uh, Benediction much to GA's dismay because it doesn't really serve much of a purpose, but I was like, nah, we're gonna double it at some point in the run. Don't you worry, it's gonna be amazing. The big important thing for us to get here is Fanaticism. We have the Evade Armor on Laia, so she will be evading the damage that she would do to herself with Fanaticism, letting us just kind of gain two energy for a card, and that will help Divine Guidance get powered up even further. Uh, we have a fortune telling that we picked up and we didn't upgrade it this round because we didn't think we needed the extra draw. We got a cold snap, cold snap is very important for us to be able to trace away a shatter if we know we're drawing a cold snap so that way we can just play the shatters for free. Really helps our energy economy. We also picked up invisibility so that shatter can do plus 75% damage. Um, other than that we took out the fluff from her deck, taking out more rains. We have punches and ice lances and punches I think will be the next thing to go as we won't really need them for too much further. Trying to keep our deck as thin as possible so that we don't run into any uh, card issues. Here, we had to look up whether we needed the gold for the uh, woman. I wanted to bank on getting uh, Bless, or Courage, or sorry, what was it? Uh, I think it's, yeah. Courage turns into Bless by paying the woman there. Um, there's an armor where if you get it as purple, you're all, all your Courage charges turn into Bless, so it could be a very efficient way to apply it. But, that's a that's a pretty lucky get if you do end up going that direction. And it's also much better on uh, Otis anyway, since he's the barrier man who gets a uh, reduced cost on defense cards. Not that that would matter to this run, since everybody's going to be level 1 anyways. Since we're getting into Act 2 now, uh, should talk about our level up, our, uh, our card strategies a little bit more. As you see, we've been having excess damage for most of the fights, so nothing was really too big of an issue. Um, even with like some, god what is this, ironclad, so this gives them extra HP. Um, <clears throat> man, I'm saying I'm a lot. But, these fights aren't too difficult. Uh, they don't have a lot of cold resist unless they get their actual like, uh, what are these guys? Uh, ping, or no, god, beavers and owls who are super frost resistant. This guy in the back is one of those guys who we were kind of worried about. It's one of the reasons that we get Mark on him. Uh, actually, that's not why. We picked up a uh, Fiend here. Uh, the Fiend slows enemies, puts mark on them. If we get it up to purple, we can do a mass slow for free at the start of every fight, meaning that we no longer need to rely on Piercing Howl, and all our speed problems are solved for the most part. One of the problems is that we don't have... Um, what's it called? No, it actually isn't a problem this run. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got a lot, of, a lot of runs in my brain like distracting me from what one we're currently on but this one <laughs> i don't think we have a speed problem we have our uh, forest crown which makes us faster than anything we could be coming up against and then andrin can speed up the rest of the team to be faster i was gonna say the dragon you need to be at 24 speed to be faster than but that was a previous run so or was it a future run it's always hard to say <laughs> 
Um, all right. Uproots, we're looking for. We're looking for a expert tracker, of course. Was I calling that Wild Hunt earlier? I think I was. Anywho, Wild Hunt is not something that we're getting. Wild Hunt is the mark enchantment that Andrew would normally be getting once you level him up to level 2, but, well, normally be getting if you uh, like to play around with his mark. It's not necessary on a lot of the runs that you do because you just do enough damage without applying a ton of mark to the enemies, especially on cold runs where you're applying wet to enemies, but you can stack up the cold and the wet damage. Again, the debuff, uh, or the less good thing about the wet and mark charges is that they don't scale with powerful or damage passives like Navalia's. So her passive of increasing damage by 30% and 4% for every 1% le more max HP she's missing does not increase damage she would be doing based on the wet charges. So that 7 damage is just a flat 7 damage added on to her cards rather than being increased by like 70% from powerful and then like... 60% from her passive or something like that. One of the things that Navalia also has going for her later on is that her level 5 passive doubles her doubles her damage of her base passive, which is extremely strong. As you can see, she already has a ton of excess damage through every fight that we're doing here. And yeah, that's just one of those <laughs> it's one of those things that you're like, man, she could really go even harder if we need to. But you don't at all have to if you have all the right cards that you're playing. One of the big things, though, of course, is getting maximum fury on a hero. If you ever want to one-shot the final bosses, uh, getting at least 100 fury on all your heroes. I'm saying at least 100. 100 is the max if you're playing on M16 because of the restricted power. But if you're not playing restricted power, you could go far past that. And if you do go past that you'll probably be able to one round final bosses, which is really fun to do. Find Weakness here is a great replacement for our Hunter's Mark. It applies Mark, it applies more Vulnerable. We're more interested in the Vulnerable than the Mark. And it stays in our deck so we can potentially scavenge it if we need to. Um, but I don't think we'll need to too much. Again, we're finding a Rift Fight here. Main reason we wanted to fight it is that we could go up to the Armory and it gives us an extra car card reward as well as an extra uh, item reward chance here. This is one of the ways that we could potentially get a double spell item, which I was really, really banking on. <laughs> a lot of times you get Dimensional Crystal early on, it doubles the first spell you play. I is only playing one spell, so it's very nice to be able to double it up, and that one spell would be the Purple Benediction, which would then finally give us more Bless than the energy put into Divine Power. <laughs> Which is really, really what I wanted. I wanted that four extra bless per two energy, you know? That would have made me feel really great about that decision. Anyways, this fight here, we have the invisibility, we have the shatter. A lot of damage gets done. We take the bludgeon as well, since bludgeon applies crack, and we're going to be having icebreaker. Icebreaker does cold damage every time we apply crack. So the more sources of crack that we can apply, the better, and bludgeon hits three times. Here we get no such luck. Uh... <laughs> Sadly, we have Endless Bag. Endless Bag is amazing, but we don't get any luck with the um, double up on a spell. Endless Bag, though, when Cornelius runs out of cards, he'll draw three more, so now he can go through his deck a lot more efficiently and actually play more cards than just uh, Scrolls of Intellects and Scrolls of Speed. Frost Dragon's here. Uh, a little bit worrisome a lot of the time, but that's only if you're not one-shotting them. I say they're worrisome because they'll steal your buffs and then apply their debuffs that they got back onto you. So they can be a little bit challenging in that regard, but in this case, we're probably going to have enough damage to one-shot the uh, boss here. And we get up to a ton of energy cards, a ton of scrolls of intellect. Um, and there we go, look at that. We drew the three cards once we ran out of energy, or once we had a, out of cards in our hand. And we were able to play one extra rain. And that felt great. It also just lets us be a little bit more liberal with how we trace uh, Cornelius' cards there. Let's see. Helping Hand, Clarity's good for the Inspire. We can't slow down Navalia here with Delay Response, as that would put her too slow. And she would be forced to go after the Dragons, which would then mean they do a ton of damage to us, so not really something we can afford here. We're able to get another Shatter. We've picked up two Shatters going through this entire act so far. Fantastic stuff for us. I, I really got excited on that Purple's Winter's Night's Tale. Like, the bluff is, of course, a very nice thing to get, especially with her passive at level 3 that you normally have by this point in the run. But 
we don't have that passive, and I really like Purple's Winter Diet's Tail because it gives you three cold spells uh, with a cost reduction of three, so its damage potential is more for the energy that you pay, but it, you have to get kind of lucky. So it's very much of a high roll card, uh, especially because Shatter is really what we want most of the time, and Shatter does so much. The Necropotence there is nice. It means that Cornelius can go even further into his deck. He can really go through his entire deck now. Unfortunately, Paladin Gauntlets was that item I was talking about earlier. It is not uh, purple, so we're not going to be taking it. Icebreaker here is the crux of a lot more of Navalia's damage. Again, every time we apply Shatter, it, or Crack rather, we're going to be dealing 7 damage, and Shatter does apply Crack, so it will be doing 7 cold damage, which is going to be increased by all sorts of buffs that Laya ha or Navalia has, so that 7 damage is going to be more like 200 later on. <laughs> Maybe even right now. So, really good item for her to have. Increases her damage substantially over anything else we could give her. And we don't need the extra draw from the book as we're just not really low on cards. And we'll have extra, like when you think about it, the extra draw would give us like maybe an Ice Lance or an extra punch. And we'll be having an extra Ice Lance on almost every single crack card that we play. So the, the damage doesn't really shake out there just by having that one extra card. For Cornelius, again, applying Rain, doing Frost Nova, really nice stuff for us. We get all the way through our deck, we have the Cold Snap, level two there, we're able to play Frost Nova and Rains again, applying more chill, and we get the Transmission. Cornelius just has a very, very nice deck at this point. It feels great to play. Um, fanaticism here with uh, Laia gives her even more energy. We have the delay response if we want to, but we can't because they'll be too slow. <laughs> Again, delay response with the extra slow charges is just kind of very funny. Winter's Night's Tale here, we do get it. I'm very excited and uh, it, it doesn't pay off. <laughs> we, we actually have this fight where I'm not able to one-shot everybody because Winter's Night's Tale doesn't give us anything like a shatter and we didn't get a shatter earlier, so. Or we didn't get our upgraded shatters that hit the entire enemy team. So, very unfortunate. This is actually, I think, the... Yeah, well, I, I don't want to spoil anything. But this is one of the few fights that we don't actually uh, take out everybody round one. Unfortunate hand here. Maybe I could have if I went further into those life taps. But one of the reasons that we didn't do that is because we weren't sure if the dragon was going to be dealing any damage to us. We, we were like thinking about the speed things, and we were, we've were we been burned by the dragon before, doing some extra damage. This the stun made it so that we don't have to worry about any of the extra damage that the uh, one leftover enemy would have had to, or would have been able to do. So we don't actually like lose anything from this, because we're still getting excellence, but it is kind of sad that we didn't one-shot. <laughs> of course, if I played it a little bit better, we could have gotten rid of Winter's Knight's Tail. We could have gone back and have gotten rid of Winter's Knight's Tail and been able to one-shot the entire enemy team but I didn't really feel like it was worth it. We get rid of the Hunter's Mark here because we have the uh, God Find Weakness card, which does more for us in, in vulnerability sense. And we have to start figuring out what cards we're getting rid of here on Navalia. It's going to be these punches. Punches aren't really looking too strong for us. They don't apply cracks. They're not doing that extra damage. We don't actually want to take the heal option there that we get with the Torch, as the Torch wouldn't give us anything... Or it would, it would give us less damage on Navalia. That's the main problem. We want to keep her kind of low. And we're able to go as low as possible here because we're getting a full health heal going into the next town. We're more than fast enough to uh, beat this dragon. We are able to slow him by two. We have the slow from the Fiend here, so that was one of the other reasons that we never had to worry about the dragon speed because he's going to be at 16 rather than the 20 that he normally would be at. And the Frost on us that slows us down by three is not going to be enough. So, yeah, max vulnerability, 10 mark, gonna get extra chill, we're gonna have extra wet charges up to 11 wet, 21 chill on him, so his resistances are a lot lower on cold than they otherwise would be, otherwise he resists cold quite nicely. We have a second divine power here, which isn't gonna be any use for us whatsoever in Laia's deck, Laia's deck isn't drawing smoothly the whole time, but we're able to damage ourselves a little bit with life tap and then one shot the boss <laughs> essentially with Navalia's vengeance passive card that she gets in the starter in her starting deck. Uh, I've mentioned Navalia is just like the best carry because <laughs> man, Navalia is like the best carry. 
Freezing ink here is of course something that's really worthwhile to grab as well. Every time Cornelius plays a book, he'll be doing frost damage and applying chill and wet charges to the entire enemy team, meaning he'll be able to do a decent amount of damage as well as support Navalia's damage even further. We do plan on going up through the Black Forge here because that'll give us a lot of money. We also get a Warrior's Code if we really wanted to take it, but we kind of were full on potion slots and it costs a lot of money. Uh, we can buy Rifty here now as well so that Navalia could have a pet that does extra damage. I will show you the deck changes that we made. I don't think it was too much because we already were messing with our deck changes, but feel free to pause on any of these if you want. We have Shifting Scroll now, just in case we really need to get a spell later on. It also lets us discard something for Cold Snap, so we can pick up a Frost Nova uh, if we need to. We have our Fortune Telling upgraded, so we can dig further into Navalia's deck if we need to, and we... Yeah, we just upgraded our other Shatter so that it's, they're all yellow now. We upgraded our other life taps so that we have extra energy. And we kept Bludgeon in the deck so that we're doing as much as we can. We can go over all the items here. I don't think we bought anything here except for Daily. Daily applies a little bit extra Frost with Cornelius, so it was kind of a might as well. And we could have bought Rifty, but I think was holding out on Rifty for some reason. I don't remember why during the run, but there's there something else I potentially wanted to get, and I, I just can't remember what that was. Wanty here is one of those guys that is scary for us, except we're fast enough with Cornelius thanks to his purple boots that we got earlier on. The swift boots on Andrin also makes him even faster, though it was not necessary to outspeed Monty. We didn't get the slow on Monty either, so that was something that was kind of concerning, but thanks to Laia having a bunch of speed and Cornelius being able to frost all the enemies, we are able to outspeed Monty with every single hero that we got, so life's pretty good for us. We then also have Piercing Howl, so we can get everybody down to the uh, six, no, we're getting the bunny down to six vulnerability, but we're getting everybody else down to two vulnerability. Anyways, bunny's the main one who resists Frost, Squirrel and the Beaver up front do as well, but Navalia should be able to damage herself enough with her life taps. Oh man, we didn't get the, uh... <laughs> wow, I was going to say, we didn't get Vengeance, so Navalia's passive wasn't active there at all. That's just cold cards being really strong. <laughs> no need to power them up any more than they already were, right? Like, Cold is just probably, like, the strongest carry archetype in the game. It's one of the other reasons we decided on Navalia as our carry, is right now we feel Cold is... Cold has a lot of good spells, a lot of good cards that scale super well into the late game. Uh, I feel like I said Cold, like, seven times there, and it stopped becoming a word that meant anything. But, <laughs> anyways. This fight here in the arena, not something I'm really worried about. I was debating, by the way, for anybody who is around at this point in the run, there's like at least like 10% of you, I think. <laughs> so that's, that's something. Uh, I was debating whether or not to show a lot of these fights. I know I've been skipping over a lot of those sh fights in one-shot builds. The reason I skip them is because they tend to be very samey. Uh, we can at least see what Necropotence does here. It draws us more cards, gives us more energy, so like Cornelius can go through his deck. It's not always going to be a super useful card for us to pick up, but sometimes it's great. Uh, it does draw us like over our deck limit sometimes because we're drawing two cards per one card we discard. So yeah, a lot of filter there that is potentially unnecessary. I'm also getting rid of Winter's Night's Tale a lot, as you can see, because the shatter is going to be more than enough and we don't need to high roll on a lot of these fights. Some of them might, sometimes though, I will just take a Winter's Night's Tale because I'll be confident in our damage or I just want to see what it does. Battle of Conquest here is not something that we need, but Battle of Evasion is kind of cool if we want it in the later game. It means that we can survive an extra round for the bosses, which we weren't sure if we're going to be able to one-shot, uh, given our level 1 <laughs> uh, capabilities, because, again, bosses have, like, what, like 10,000 and then, like, almost 15,000 HP at the very end. So they take a lot to get through if you want to beat them in one round. You need just tons of damage and we weren't really sure if we we're going to have a ton of fury on Navalia because that can be sometimes hard to stack up though enrages do give us a better chance of that which I did we get an enrage already I think we have an enrage on someone by now but I have to double check on who that was anyways any enrage that we get on Navalia we will be turning into the enrage that gives us the five fury because that will be 25 percent extra damage and we're of course going to be at max powerful all the way we took on the Fire Mages here, because even though they're slightly more resistant to cold than the other guys, uh, they're not super resistant to cold, they're of course more resistant to fire. And they shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. Navalia, yeah, we do have an Anon Rage, but we haven't upgraded it yet. We'll do that later, once we get more Fury stuff. 
<laughs> you see, it's like what, an Ice Lance and a Shatter after Cornelius does all his stuff and that's all we need? Yeah. We're super set up to do high amounts of damage in this on this team. Very, very solid team. I would say uh, this is like some of GA's preferred setups for a lot of carries. Andrin, Laia, and Cornelius. Uh, he uses Laia a lot as support and Cornelius a lot as support. Cornelius, <laughs> Cornelius being support because he starts with two scrolls of intellect is just <laughs> very amusing to me. It's, it's such a funny reason for like this super fire mage that has like basically all fire spells other than those two scrolls of intellect. It's like, ah, no, actually the rest of his deck, pointless. <laughs> Those two, those two cards, though, amazing. <laughs> and like when you think about it, right? Like it is a whole uh, delay response, but without the downside. So, and they can start innately in your hand. I, I can understand why GA values them so highly, and you can probably see throughout the run why they've been valued highly. Didn't need to rely on that Winter's Night's Tale. <laughs> Again, I have GA there being like, "Why do we have this Winter's Night's Tale this entire time?" He's kind of upset that I took it, but I was okay with that. <laughs> Got another Cold Snap, because we're going to be playing Shatters for free whenever we trace them away. The, idea, the goal is to draw more um, Cold Snaps and get rid of more Shatters, so that we have super efficient energy economy in the late game, because we want to play as many damaging cards as possible for as cheap as possible, since the bosses at the end will require a lot to kill. Uh, here we do end up finding a call in. Colin's not going to be an issue, mainly thanks to the uh, speed increase on Cornelius, because if Cornelius was at his base speed of 14, he would go only go up to 22 speed here, and that would be a problem. We would have had to speed up Laia, and then we would have had a sort of energy deficit on Laia, and we would have needed to make sure that Laia got her other cards, which were um, uh, Piercing how We would have had to make sure that she had that. So... Yeah, that's just one of the nice things about having the extra boots here. Gives us that sort of speed control that we just don't need to worry about. And then once Cordelius goes, of course, he can slow down the entire enemy team with a bunch of frost thanks to the, uh, well, God, I was going to say ink pen, but it's like frozen ink, I think is what it's called. <laughs> yeah, I think it's called frozen ink. Uh, Frozen Ink plus Frost Nova gets them to 20 uh, chill on all enemies, that slows them down by a further 4, meaning we're always going to outspeed them uh, with the rest of our team after that, with a little bit of fast charges applied. So, Invisibility, Shatter, very good. Vengeance on Colin to take him out was also very nice there. So, good stuff all around. We don't need any of these extra cards. <laughs> we don't need the Bookworm necessarily, but it is nice to have as we can sort of make Cornelius' deck even more efficient, and we can put the Scrolls of Speed uh, in the deck further away if we want, or we can get rid of them. Uh, no, that's not quite right. That's not exactly what we ended up doing. Anyways, we're going to have to go through the gate here. We do get a single burn, which is a little bit unfortunate. Or is it a single burn, or does everybody get a burn? Either way, it doesn't really matter too much, as we're able to more efficiently go through everybody's deck with traces and stuff anyways, that we're going to be fine. Fiend here is the fastest uh, other creature. We actually get the slow on him, not that it's necessary, thanks to our Chant of Initiative, but it is kind of an uh, interesting note. The Mage in third there is probably the most annoying for us to face, as they have a ton of Frost Resistance, especially at this point in the run. I think they all scale up when their resistances as well, but god, what are they at? Like They're at like 60 or 70% Frost Resist as a base. Something fairly high. Thanks to vulnerability though, that does go down quite a bit. And if we get them down to like basically just a 50% resistance, we have enough overkill and damage to deal to deal uh, with that 500 HP. I guess that means we're doing like a thousand damage with all our cards, which sounds about right, honestly. We get our full scrolls of intellect there. Laia gets to be at six energy. At this point, we want to be playing transmission on her rather than the scroll of intellect, because the scroll of intellect we only need one Inspire on Laia, and if we wanted to stack more energy on her, we'd be stacking two Scrolls of Intellect, which would be inefficient Inspire-wise, so better to stack those on Navalia. I do the Vengeance on the Mage there, so our Blunt Damage helps get us through as well. Very briefly, think about Tactical Thinking, as Tactical Thinking is a starting card that can reduce something to zero, but it doesn't actually make sense for us. 
where you do get a free upgrade. So we got an upgrade Adrenaline, which might matter later on. We upgrade a Scroll of Intellect to allow Cornelius to draw, really kind of helps his deck a little bit. Upgrade that in Rage, and we upgrade the Meditate for Laia, so she can have even more energy at the start. Here, follow along if you want to follow these Golden Shards, and uh, see if you guess where they were. <laughs> Ended up being kind of difficult for us. I had to pause and rewatch the, uh, the video that we took of it and slow it down. So that, yeah, I could guess it was in the middle. Did anybody else guess it was the second from the right? I didn't. <laughs> I guessed wrong. I thought it was on the far right. So glad I had that video. Gets us the 1500 golden shards that we have well deserved and uh, maybe we can buy something really special in the later game. These enemies here, uh, all rather weak to Frost. Honestly, the main reason I wanted to go through here is because I figured the Fireland would be the easiest for us to fight. It, we don't have to worry about like speed control with the Hydras too much. We don't have to worry about any damage that they deal to us there. Not that it'd be like a huge issue, but uh, everything in the Fireland is typically weaker to Frost damage anyways. So it's just an easy land for us to beat. Plus, I think it's one of the better ones for score. Uh, gee, it would have to correct me on that if I'm wrong, but yeah. Not too challenging either way. The only thing that we have to worry about is the boss uh, in the forge here, as if we attack him, he will be doing retribution damage to us, so he'll be playing burn and uh, doing fire damage to the entire team every time he blocks some of the damage that we've done. So our goal mainly is to do enough damage that he can't block what we've done too many times as we can take like one or two hits from his retribution and then be just fine afterwards. We get an upgraded Ballad of Evasion here, which we decide is worth it. Or do we decide it's worth it? Man, <laughs> I'm, I'm re-rolling here, but yeah. I think we decide that's worth it because uh, it could be nice to have in the late game. Four evasion means we can just, or I guess it's going to be three evasion when we lower it down to stanza two. Three evasion means that we could just deal with it. Uh, the Blood Rage there we didn't take because we just didn't need it. Uh, that's really the only reason. I think Life Tap takes less HP, and that's why we chose it, so we could have finer HP control um, over Blood Rage. Anyways, here's the boss that I was talking about. One of the nice things about item damage, which Cornelius will be doing very shortly, is that it does not impact retribution, um, or it doesn't, it doesn't make it so that the laser beam is going to fire at us. Because for some reason, dealing damage passively through items doesn't count as uh, the enemy blocking damage. I, <laughs> I can't really explain it. Anyways, that middle uh, driver's seat is the only thing that we actually need to kill, so that will be where we're focusing our primary attention on. Unfortunately, daily does hit the <laughs> uh, driver's seat there, so we do take a little bit of extra damage, more than we really needed to. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful with Navalia. We need to make sure that she's doing as much as we possibly can. For that reason, I don't play Frost Nova because we don't want to take any extra damage that we don't have to. We have the seven vulnerability on him. We have 21 wet and 20 chill, as well as three mark. So it's pretty much going to be the best that we get there. And Navali is at pretty low health, so she's going to be doing a lot of extra stuff, especially with that extra retribution damage. Oh uh, man, thankfully we were able to kill him. We actually could have killed everything all at once there, but... <laughs> Didn't quite have to do that. We get another Cold Snap, which is pretty nice. It means that we can now play all three of our uh, Shatters in an ideal turn from the Grave for zero cost. Uh, pretty nice stuff. We get a Steadfast Boots. Just to increase resistances and HP for Antrin. Just in case we need it down the line. Otherwise, it's not much better than Swiftfoot Boots. Doesn't really make much of an impact on the run. Does mean he can't be slowed, which could be cool, for, I think, for some challenges, maybe? I feel like there's a challenge that slows us. Can't remember what, though. And again, the fights here, these are scaled up fights of all the champions, so things are getting into the uh, many hundreds of HP all the time. I think the uh, boss boar that we, or boss minotaur that we fought was 1400 HP. So you can see the champion minotaurs, even at this point, aren't that uh, threatening in compared to the boss versions. Uh, not that 1400 HP is enough to stop Navalia. Navalia is pretty incredible. And yeah, we get a slight heal after the boss fight too. I didn't. I just noticed that Navalia was at 13 at the end of the boss fight, but she goes up to 41. I don't know if it's a percentage base heal or if it's a flat heal. I'd imagine it's percentage base. That makes the most sense to me. 
but <laughs> it's one of those things I've never like thought too deeply about. I just like sometimes you get healed after a mini boss fight. It's kind of cool, but <laughs> for Devalia, you don't want to be healed because you want her to deal max damage, unless you're taking damage passively from like a bomb or something. But we wouldn't be doing that since we could trace it away. We have Enraged there. We have other good stuff. Uh, <laughs> man, do I do I play Winter's Night's Tale? Nah, I just go with Shatter. Oh, I do play the Winter's Night's Tale. We get a non-upgraded Shatter. <laughs> Not super great, but <laughs> I do finish it off with Winter's Night's Tale, much to uh, GA's dismay. Man, it's so fun to mess with people, though. Like, you, you ever feel that way sometimes? We get the free card upgrade removal here, which gets rid of our burns, which is nice. But you ever feel like it's just like some people are just really fun to poke. Like they just have good reactions. Like it's just like, hey, like. Like, what if I just do this, you know? Like, I, I feel like I showed that a, a bit in our last run. <laughs> it's just, our dynamic when playing is it's kind of entertaining to me. I asked GA if it bothers him, like, a lot, and he's like, only if it loses us the run. Otherwise, otherwise he's okay with it. <laughs> but if it makes a difference in, uh, in a little bit of trolling, like taking uh, the purple benediction, then, then it bothers him. Which, by the way, we did get rid of that purple benediction. I, I, I did that for him since I took the purple Winter's Night's Tale, you know. I can only have one purple troll card. <laughs> Not that Winter's Night's Tale is terrible. It, it could do work, right? which I get to show off in one fight later on, I think, in the later acts, yeah. Um, although, actually, oh, maybe I got rid of that fight because later acts were taking a while and I didn't want this video to go on too long. I think it's already going to be around like an hour and 20 minutes. We'll see. Anyways. That's neither here nor there, as we have Divine Powers to apply onto Navalia. We get up to 19 Bless. We have the Enrage for the Fury. We have the Vengeance to go even further down in health. Two slaps of Vengeance is all it takes to kill the uh, back champion there. Here, there's nothing really for us to take. Uh, we do get our nice card upgrade, so we can upgrade Mono Gem even further. We can change the Mono Gem on Cornelius if we want. We get to upgrade our Cold Snap. Uh, oh, it's not free upgrade, this is just an altar. So yeah, we got to change the mono gem on Cornelius from yellow to blue, which is nice. And then we get to upgrade Chant of Initiative to stay in the deck. We do plan on getting rid of the other Chant of Initiative, so might as well do that now. Now, you can imagine, Ignito is, <laughs> is not well suited to fighting us. Uh, he is super weak to cold, and we're going to be lowering his res resistances even further. Man, I feel like I'm having a little bit of a hard time talking this video. <laughs> but, anyways, Lava Monster versus Frost Magic. Not a good matchup for him. Very good for us. I, I, the real question is, like, how few cards can we kill him in? We'll just take a single Vengeance. The Vengeance does apply a crack, by the way, so Navalia's starting card is even more perfect with Icebreaker, as every time you slap with a double damage, you also are applying the crack, which will now deal frost damage, so it does like, I mean, god, it's probably like 600 damage a hit, so I want to say it's like 1500 damage overall on like, as a base, <laughs> once we power up Navalia with a bunch of bless and powerful and a little bit of fury. It's going to be like 1500 damage just by itself. So, will that be enough to take out Igneto? Let's find out. Enrage, Vengeance. No, not quite enough. Okay, that was only like 1400 damage. I was completely wrong. Here we get a second last reward. And what's really funny to me is like, I, I, I really want to take that last reward. Like that looks really tempting to me because I'm like, man, last reward's just so good. But like we think about it, we discuss it for a bit and it's not entirely necessary for us to grab it as we already have all the cards that we need in Andrin's deck. He already has the single last reward, and we're probably not playing more than that because we won't have enough card draw in his deck otherwise. We get the extra energy on Cornelius, actually, rather than on Lya, because that allows Cornelius to play everything, and the, then Lya can take the extra handbook here, which is going to be increasing her energy in a way um, anyways. So, yeah. We figured that was the most efficient split of uh, items there, as... Normally, you'd want to take more energy on Laia. Uh, here, we also are going to go through the middle. Uh, we have the key for it. It's very nice. We get a Gladiator Helmet, which is a way to, for us to get Fury immediately on Navalia. Very strong. As you can see, everybody's still level 1. <laughs> Fury immediately on Navalia means we can uh, double and triple it with our Infuriate cards. So we can only buy one of those, so we want to just triple it immediately. We bought Blizzard on Cornelius. Cornelius can now apply a lot more Frost. That's one of the reasons that we took more energy on him. We got a second fortune telling on Laia, it's upgraded to 8 so that we can make sure that Navalia has 
all the shatters in the grave while being able to draw all the cold snaps, at least that's the goal. And we kept scries because scry into expected prophecy allows us to draw whatever we need. We also have a bunch of divine powers. So we have our three upgrade cold snaps, we have infuriate, uh, we have the shatters all upgraded. We've got a repetition training as well so that we could grab a bluff if we need to. And then we of course bought the gladiator helmet on Laia as that's going to be giving her... God, it starts with what? Nine fury? So nine times five, 45% more damage. And then when we triple that, or I guess we're going to double it initially, we're going to be getting just a lot more damage <laughs> overall. <clears throat> Caesar. The idea is later, hopefully, finding another Infuriate going up to 100 and being at plus 500% damage. And then add that on top of her passive, which can get her up to like 200% damage if we get her down to like 6 HP or 5 HP or something like that. And we'll be sitting pretty pretty. Alright, Cornelius here, uh, finally activating his ink pet or frozen ink. Not ink pen. Man, I don't know why I want to keep saying it that way. We are able to draw into Blizzard if we need to, but we have the Cold Snap to draw Blizzard so that we have a more efficient way. This is how you'd do it if you didn't have any extra, extra energy with like Mono Gem or the Ring, is you'd Cold Snap into the uh, Blizzard there. As you see, we have three energy left over, so some of our energy sources aren't particularly necessary. The uh, Dark Miasma that we've been getting though, the extra energy from it all run, has been very nice. So that's something that to keep in mind is like, all of our members have had extra energy, essentially, this entire time. <laughs> Here, we don't even have to play Infuriate. Ooh, yeah, look at that. We get the we get the purple Icicle Barrage. I'm not going to show too many fights from these final acts, by the way. I'm going to do mostly a boss rush. I'll go over any cards that we get and any items that we get uh, after this fight. But here's where we are at the start of Act 4. As you can see, fairly strong. <laughs> Uh, there's our second Infuriate, now we're going to be able to get up to 100 Fury once we make one of those a triple. If we made both of them a triple, of course we get up there too, but we can't go past 100, so there's no real reason to do that. Though if you can go past 100 with, uh, no restricted power, then by all means, go double and triple Infuriate. We get another Enrage here, which is fantastic on Navalia. We get a Demonic Tutor as well that is purple on Laia, so now we can potentially get a even cheaper Divine Power. Fantastic stuff for us. Makes it so that we actually mainly want to find powers in the deck rather than the Guidance card. Since the Guidance card only costs one and we wouldn't be getting as much of an energy savings since uh, Demonic Tutor also costs one. Whereas on Divine Power we'd get a, another one co or two cost energy savings. Here we get our middle items. Um, most of the fights went much the same way that the first fight you saw went. So again, not going over those. Uh, the one big thing that we get here is Nullifier. Nullifier means that monsters can have plus X, six extra vulnerable charges on them, and we apply three each turn with Andrin, thanks to his extra vulnerable charge perk. And we're able to remove cards here with Laia. Uh, yeah, we remove the Divine Guidance because Divine Guidance is unnecessary. We don't really need to remove anything else. We take the shop here. This fight, again, wasn't much of a challenge. Armageddon doesn't matter because the enemies don't get to go. Cloud Song here is very nice. It's an extra saving of two energy each turn, so... We take that on Navalia, uh, means that we can play some higher cost cards if we absolutely need to. The stimulant pills just aren't necessary, and honestly, could get us to faster than we need to, so we we don't take those. Uh, we might we save our gold in case we find a shop with something better later on. Now the twins fight I was like worried about very early on when we were just discussing the run because the twins can be very tanky, and if you don't kill them super fast, like you'll be in trouble. It's one of those things I worried that our lack of leveling would stop us from being able to kill them too well. But my concern was completely unfounded as... as <laughs> I felt like super confident we'd be able to handle the twins at this point in the run. We've been doing like well over 5,000 damage. Or we had well over 5,000 damage potential with some of our best turns. So this shouldn't be too much of an issue. Plus they don't resist frost particularly. The back one I think resists it more than the front one. It resisted like... Actually, you know, I think it resists by like 60%, whereas the front one only resists it by like 0 or like 30% at the start, so there's a difference between the two. Um, our, as you can see, our setup's mostly the same. Uh, we want to get Dark Miasma, so we have as much energy as possible with Laia. Laia gets up to, god, like 10 energy there. We make sure that we Fortune Telling to get rid of the Shatters in Navalia's hand. And then we do a 19 bless on her, we get up to 14 fury, then we double that, 
There we go. We do vengeance first. Oh man. Yeah, almost taking out the back car. Go up to 39 Fury, go up to 79. We are full on <laughs> Fury, and then we have Cold Snaps for all the shatters. And I can play Winter's Night's Tail here for free. And we get double Winter's Orb. Oh yeah, Winter's Orb. This is the fight where it really mattered. Winter's Orb does so much damage than so much more damage than the shatters. So that is a, a huge energy savings there. Very fun for us to do. Vampiric Tutor here is nice. It means that we could get a shatter for free. If we don't end up drawing it, it also kind of gets in the way. It's not necessary. That last reward still looked tempting to me, but we really don't need it, so we don't take it. Uh, the one gives us one extra energy here for anyone who needs it. We can take that on Laya to help her get even more divine power charges onto Navalia. Uh, it takes us a bit to decide. The dimensional crystal here is also something I was debating. I was like, man, look at that. We could have had the extra, <laughs> the extra purple. Uh, bless card, god, what was it called? Benediction. Purple Benediction with the Dimensional Crystal there. And uh, GA was like, nah, we'd still take the extra energy. Because <laughs> it'd be about the same. And I'm like, man, that's that's totally fair. We did need to debate whether the Cloud Song was better than the Dimensional Crystal, as Dimensional Crystal could be an extra shatter for us on Nivalia, um, which might have been better in the long run. Honestly, it's kind of a take your pick sort of situation. Here we're going down the bottom path as we get more fights that way. Fights aren't too challenging. We're finishing things with pretty much a single shatter at the very end. And I'm I'm very excited for the final boss at this point. We decided that we're not going to take Carnage, because like every run takes Carnage, you know? Like, that's always how you carry with Warriors and Fury, so... We, we want to win with just our shatters. We upgrade our, our shatters as well to be um, the stay in the deck but only single target version as we're mainly concerned about the final bosses and those ones we could play a shatter then get it back with cold snap and basically play like five shatters at the and at the last boss fight meaning we can probably kill them <laughs> yeah, very quickly we get another enrage here unfortunately after the altar so we aren't able to change it to give us fury it gives us powerful instead uh, we do that by doing the buttons wrong where it forces a fight we get another equipment shop at this point too then we finish off all the enemies oh another winter's orb another winter's orb from that winter's night's tale so good and for much the same reason as we didn't take the first carnage we skip over that purple carnage the evocation here is actually really important we found that we were one energy shy of cornelius playing every single thing in his deck uh, we can't take glacial hammer on him unfortunately since we need him to have frozen ink it's just much better for us applying frost and wet but we do take it on Laya just kind of for fun <laughs> no reason to other than that we have 5600 gold left over at the end of this run too which is like i feel like that's more than we had at the end of the other run or no it's like it, it's it's more than half of what we had at the end of the uh, run where I didn't spend any gold. As you see, going over the fact that we're all level 1, Madness 16, final boss, hand check. Ah, it's a, it's a thing of beauty, really. Navalia just does so much. One of the things we were concerned about, though, was the Archon fight. And uh, actually, as a little bit of a spoiler, the Archon did end up proving somewhat challenging. As you get a full heal going into that fight, meaning Navalia's passive isn't active. And it turns out that her passive being active is... Or <laughs> activating her passive is super important. And she really would ideally love to be as low health as possible, but I don't think we have enough cards in our deck to get us lower health. It's actually one of the reasons that we could have taken Blood Rage over our... Uh, what's it called? God, what is it called? <laughs> it's one of the reasons we could have taken Blood Rage uh, over the Life Tap, as it would get us down even further in health, which is where we want to be on the final boss. Um, there with Cornelius, I wasn't able to play the double Blizzard. That was the reason I took the Evocation, was that I could potentially double Blizzard, because we would have just enough to do it with a Cold Snap. Um, but you have to draw the cards in the right order, and we unfortunately did not. Here, though, we get a uh, really inexpensive divine power we get up to 13 vulnerable on hand checks as as vulnerable as he can be um, the vulnerability also helps us a lot with these bosses as it means that we're doing as much damage as we possibly could it, the cloud song makes infuriate cheaper there we can double up and then triple our infury we're up to 88 fury which is going to be probably enough for us to finish ansec we did like 5,000 damage in one card there oh man and then i was like man winter's night's tale right like it can do it winter orb pretty good 
<laughs> but we don't actually play it because we just need to do Shatters, and Shatters is all it took. We could have played like five Shatters instead of playing like Winter's Night's Tale, but you know, that's less fun. Here on to the final boss, uh, I'm going to show that we actually had some trouble. <laughs> I do end up playing the uh, Winter's Night's Tale here, and I'm like, man, this is going to be so good. It's going to be like a ton of damage all in one card. You see the Shatters are like all, about 2,000 damage a pop when you include their crack. But this was just an awful get. <laughs> we don't want to transform their frost into wet. It, it wouldn't help us. Um, and the other two cards there are just not high value at all. They're just kind of like weaker than shatter. So we don't finish the final boss with like 400 HP remaining. And we have to redo the fight. And after a brief pause here, just to make sure we get back into it. Losing to that Winter's Night's Tale did suck. Uh, I had a few more resets I had to do here to make sure we played our cards in just the right order. Um, so I'm skipping past that. And hopefully you don't have to worry about that too much. That's just all for me. We have to get rid of these setups as we need to draw into... Or we need to scavenge a setup so that we can draw into more setups and get through our entire deck. We do want to get up to the 13 vulnerability. Uh, we can do that very nicely um, with just Andrin if we want to. But we don't have to use him to get up there, as we can have Lyia apply a little bit more vulnerability. So we can do as much damage as possible there. And, uh, yeah. Cornelius, we just have to do... I have to remember how to do the same thing. We discard the Scrolls of Speed after we do the Blizzard. And then we are able to get through our entire deck with the Monogem and the Evocation. We And the third Monogem, we have enough to play the Blizzard a second time, even at the 8 cost. So we get up to that 50 uh, Chill, the 25 Wet, and 7 Mark. We don't have max vulnerability. That's okay, we're at 12 vulnerability with the Piercing Howl there, so we're doing a ton of damage. And I do need to get rid of the uh, Shatters so that we can draw them with the Cold, cold Snaps there. We got rid of the Winter's Night's Tale, it's not a plan that we had to worry about anymore. We have Enrages, uh, we want to play our Enrages that give us Fury before we play the Infuriates so that we get up to as much as possible to double. We pick up our Shatters because I was worried that we weren't going to be able to get them in time. We made sure that we were able to get Bludgeon as well. The Vengeance doesn't do as much as I would like right now, so we decided to do the... We don't want to draw that Miasma just yet. Um, uh, so we hold off on playing the Enrage. We go with our Vengeance, getting us down to as low HP as possible. We play the Life Taps. Uh, vengeance early is better because it takes away percentage of max HP. Uh, I'm playing this all at real-time speed so that you can see everything in detail. Bludgeon does a ton of damage with the Plying Crack, and uh, so do the Shatters. So we had probably, I would say, about 2,000 damage overkill to kill the final boss there at level 1. Really good run overall. Had a really good time doing this. It was fun having GA over. Just nice playing side by side. Nivalia, of course, doing 75,000 damage. Cornelius doing some of his own. Here's all the items that we had if you want to see them, and uh, yeah. That's really going to do it for this run. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had a great time. I really did. This is this is a fun adventure. If there's any challenges you want to see in the future, let me know. I do plan on doing a no shard challenge at some point, and then eventually working my way up to no shards and no gold. If that's something you all want to see, let me know. If it's something you don't want to see, also let me know, as those take a lot of work to do, and it's something I personally want to do, but I might not have to record it, so that could save me some time. Um, yeah, that's really going to do it, though, so... Thank you very much and goodbye.